Hello, hello, bienvenidos. Welcome. Otro episodio de Hoy en Día TV 3.0. Another episode of Hoy en Día TV 3.0. Thank you all for tuning in. Gracias por su apoyo, por estar aquí con nosotros esta noche. Este lindo día. Dios los bendiga a todos. God bless you all. So today's topic is going to be about entrepreneurship, right? Having a business because there's a lot of people that have that ambition. They just need that extra push and drive. And so I have a special guest along with my co-host, Tim, who we're going to talk about entrepreneurship. But first, I want to give a shout out to the sponsors. We have Collective Wear, Divine Beauty and Accessories, Talk Man Talk Radio, um, and go on my website, yesirodriguez.com or slash shop. You're going to see a, a, an array of different things. Diferentes cosas que puedes comprar, mirar, etc. So I want to bring on stage my co-host, Tim. Well, hello, hello. Tim, How are you? How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm great. I'm doing quite well. Thank you so much for asking. Love that smile. Always love uh, jumping in here and getting started with the show. So, yeah, glad to be here. Absolutely. Well, I, I, it's always a pleasure to have you on here because doing this is not easy. People think it's easy, but it's not easy. <laughs> it it is challenging, but you know when 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 that purpose right is so mm -hmm. strong you know, it, it helps overcome any kind of obstacles. And yeah, I'm going to talk about that a little bit during the show about, because that's very important when we talk about entrepreneurship, it, it, it has to be tied or attached to a purpose. Absolutely. And I'm so glad you mentioned that because that is exactly today's topic. And I did remind the audience that in the beginning, today's topic is about entrepreneurship. Starting a business, it can be exciting, it can be rewarding, but you have to give it dedication, dedicarte el tiempo para tu negocio. Because there's so many aspects to business, to the business world. And so myself, Tim, and our special guest that we have, he's about to join us, Yusef Morales, all the way from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He is joining yeah. us live. I'm really excited. Saludos a Yusef Morales. And here we go. We're going to bring him on. Hey, Yusef. guys, how you doing? What's going on, Welcome. brother? How you nice doing? To, nice to meet you, Mr. Tim. How you doing, sir? Doing quite well. And yourself? I'm doing pretty good. Jesse, thank you for inviting me. Let me get this straight here. You guys, I'm in the, I'm in my home office here. Uh, you'll probably hear my the baby in the background uh, doing his thing, just in case. <laughs> oh, it's okay. We love babies. <laughs> right, yeah. right. Yeah, well, no, see, but this gotta, is good. Yeah, but thank you guys for having me. I appreciate it. Nice to meet you, Mr. Tim. Yeah, same here, man. My pleasure. Well, thank you for joining us. So today's topic, as we know, entrepreneurship. And I do know that you have several businesses, especially you have um, the festival that you do every year. Yeah. You help with the, the children. So there's just many things. I'm going to let you yeah, yeah, give yeah. yourself justice because there's just so much you have going on. And so today's point is to really help encourage people and help them understand it's, it's great and rewarding to have a business, but yeah. it takes time, energy, resources, dedication and drive necesita yeah. dedicación esa ambición para seguir por delante porque no, no es fácil es bien difícil tener un negocio and a lot of people just don't understand that and so we want to make sure that before they dive into to that world of you know being a business owner they know what they're getting into and I, I tell a lot of people listen there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five <laughs> there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five um because it's you know, I'm a person that I've, I I didn't ever start with no loans. Um, I didn't learn mm -hmm. about credit until I was older in my 30s. Um, mm -hmm. So a lot of those hacks that a lot of people can do in the beginning. So when it comes to starting from the bottom um, and really feeling the pains, the festival is just one of the things that I do. Um, I've had numerous businesses from box truck company. I'm one of those entrepreneurs that likes to follow the trends and sell the business or move on to the next business. The festival is my, like he said, Mr. Tim said when he introduced, that's my passion. That's like something that I love. Uh, everything I've done, I've loved though. Like everything is a connection with God somehow has, can, here, you said, learn this for this second and let's move you to this so you can learn. So I've kind of picked up a lot of things. Um, the festival, thank God, 10, you're going 11 years. Um, it, it is, and since it is about business today, it is an LLC, so it is not a nonprofit. Um, I've done several things. Um, I just, I'll talk about the recent things just so you guys kind of, so um, I yeah, had a no, box store company that we started. Yeah, we started a box store company last year. Well, I, I started with, with Bald Head Mafia is a brand that I started, right? I, I did, mm -hmm. This will all connect, but I started Bald Head Mafia. It's still, you can go to baldheadmafia.com or the Instagram. 
Um, I shaved my head and I still wasn't like comfortable. So people kept making fun of me. So my brothers and I were all bald, <laughs> we're all bald, like all of us. So that joking around, I'm into like, you know, mobster movies. And I started saying, well, there's bald head mafia guys. And I used to see all these guys and I'd be like, didn't even know them. And I'd just be like, bald head mafia. Hey, sir, how you doing? And people would just react. I finally made a t-shirt out of it. Long story short, I ended up getting a guy that believed in me that was online, um, helped me out, bought a big piece of it. I ended up getting a warehouse. We did an aftershave um for our for bald head this all turned from just a joke um we ended up selling a lot of t-shirts got on amazon sold a lot of products opened up a warehouse um that business was then moved and kind of bought out i still have a percentage but that helped me get the box truck going um mm -hmm. in the box truck business that's the way we ended up going for um, um zero box trucks to having three box trucks around the time um, our first year we did over three hundred thousand. Second year and this is me just learning on youtube i'm telling you this yeah, stuff just so you kind of for your audience, this is all me learning stuff on YouTube. Like Mr. Tim said, sacrifice. I hadn't slept. Um, I still haven't slept. Um, but that box truck business was able to lead me to another business. And now we're, our festival is something where I'm focusing on because ticket sales are going to generate. Um, and just a lot of things with the festival. It's my passion. We're opening up the Puerto Rican Center soon. But that's just a little bit I could keep going. I'll let you guys just we go on with the conversation, but just so you, I understand the struggle from starting from zero dollars to not paying yourself for 10 years to saying, okay, I knew that from the beginning. It's, it was going to take me eight to 10 years, but I'm here mm -hmm. now. Now let's make up now. We're, but you got to, you got to like tell yourself that every year. Right. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, it's exciting because anything regarding Puerto Rico, I, I'm excited. So I'm excited to see what you do with the Puerto Rican Center. And one of these days, I'm going to make it out to the Puerto Rican Festival. It's actually well, coming up in 10, August, right? 9,000 to 10,000 people we should be doing this year. And it was oh, a wow. festival. Wow. Yeah, we started, we started under a bridge. Um, I was in a bad job and I was just praying, praying, praying. And then I had this idea from things I did in my younger days. And we started under a bridge with no money. Me and my, uh, and my, and my woman and my wife. And my, my son, he was younger then, but we started under a bridge, no money for porta potties, no money for security guards, barely could pay the, uh, the DJ. And now we've grown to a major festival, We're about to do 10,000 people this year. Now, actually, I opened up the Milwaukee official pamphlet to the city and we were on eighth page. Now we're actually like an official city um, event to Milwaukee. So it's pretty cool. That's awesome. That is amazing. Wow, saludos, Yusef. You're doing great things out there in Milwaukee. For those who are going to be around in August, Yusef, remind the people, when is it, August 16th? Yeah, August 18th, yeah. And if you just make, like I tell people, if you're not from here, plan the trip, come out here. Milwaukee's, Milwaukee's a great city. I love it, so. Yeah, you said a, you said a lot of key things, uh, Yusef. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the things that, that, that you said is, and I heard, is the, the, the dedication and the commitment, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I will add to that. One of the things, I've had several businesses and I thought I failed. Yeah. But when I went back and I looked at it, right, failure kind of gets a bum rap. There's yeah. a lot mm -hmm. of valuable information when something doesn't work, if we go and take a look at it. Yeah. To stay, to stay trapped into a um, one lane Mm -hmm. it's, I call it conformity and mm -hmm. conformity leaves no room for creativity. So you right. let yourself open so that you could visualize other businesses and helping more people. Your yeah. focus really had nothing to do with you. Listen, I was called, I heard I mean, you say you, <laughs> it was you about other get, people. If, if, if I turn to camera, even like things like, you know, like this, this is one of my old businesses we started. It was during the CBD brand. And I came up with it was called anxiety mm -hmm. stick because people had anxiety and it was full CBD. You know, this was one that didn't work out too well, but I did end up making about like twenty thousand dollars out of it. And I had and I got to travel everywhere, going to actual a lot of um, shows. I can keep going. I guess if I flip this around, it's like a warehouse of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the bobblehead mafia stuff that we did. This is one of our posts. One of our posters we were sending out to our clients. Um, and we put out a map and we shipped to Germany, Russia, like anywhere you could think of. We were shipping a lot of stuff out. Um, and again, and 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 and, and that's more that mafia is still mine, but that's one that like I tell a lot of people, it's an idea, but you don't have to use it right now. It's in the yeah. burner. The Instagram yeah. is still there. I'm not putting energy, but I'm, I got some things I'm working on. It's gonna make us a little bit more money, and then I'll come back to it. Um, and it's yeah, it's it, it, I've done a million businesses, man, but I've learned from every single one. There's key yeah. ones that 
I've been able to make money to take care of my family and reinvest and and do and do good. Um, but it's been a lot of them that hasn't. You know, I got I got a question for you because I went through this. Did you ever did you ever experience a point because I I started this national key recovery business and I won't get into all the details but I had this vision because I I drove to the airport and when I landed at my destination I couldn't find my car key but yeah. I knew that I had my keys because I drove my vehicle to the airport and I came up with this key tag like I said if somebody found my keys and actually wanted to return them to me they would have no way to do so. Now, this was back in 2008, right? Yeah. And so I, I, I came up with this National Key Recovery Service, and I did all of the really? paperwork and all the bells and whistles. And, you know, I wanted to get this thing into the post office because it, just to tell you the magnitude of it, we wanted the post office to sell these two key tags for $9.99, right, for okay. two key identification tags. Amazing idea in 2008, too. That's genius. Yeah. And so, mm -hmm. um, you know, there's like 40,000 post offices across the United States. If each of them sold two, they were doing 50 50 deals. Yeah. You see the kind of revenue we were looking at. Amazing. Yep. Mm -hmm. and, and, and they shot it down. You know, DC is very political, right? And so, anyway, my point is, it hurt me so bad yeah. when I had to close the doors on it. It was a Saturday. I couldn't take it no more, I couldn't move it forward. Yeah. And I had to shut it down. The website, I had spent 10 grand on the website. This is before, you know, what we see yeah. now. Uh, and yeah, yeah. everything was hard coded. There was HTML, no plug -in. Everything was coded. <laughs> there was and, no week. Yeah. And so that Saturday morning when I shut it down, it was nice outside. And yes, I went it was Saturday morning and I balled up in the bed in a knot. <laughs> I was in that much pain. I'm, I'm not laughing at you. I'm laughing with you because I had it happen many times. And I, um, I, I had invested 40 grand, right? And I couldn't take it no further. And I said to myself, I'll never do it again. I've had four other businesses. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, uh, that, that, I, that's part of the game, man. I had, mm -hmm. I've had a few similar... I've had it happen to me maybe... Nine, ten times, man. I, I yeah. went. I made my first seventeen k. I made with my box truck. I went down to Florida. I sent. We sent them some money. I went down to Florida with a big amount of money to finish the cash and drive it back. With one of my drivers, um, cash. This is the hard-earned money. I haven't slept for three months. I'm working my day shift the whole time. Keep it in yeah. mind, I'm working day shift the whole time. Go down there, pay cash. I, I didn't notice that these yellow tags say that there's no limit laws in Florida. So you buy something, and you get it as it is. There's no thirty days, none of that stuff. Long story short, the truck broke down, didn't work. The, called the owner. The owner told me I could, I don't want to, it's some very, he told me I could do some very nasty stuff to him. That's what he, that was his answer to me and that it wasn't his problem. I wow. ran, I was, I stayed there with two, two grand. I was in the middle of Atlanta and some not very friendly place. Middle of Atlanta with one of my guys, a brown dude. And so it was even rougher because it was in the wrong parts. $2,000, we wasted all of our money. We had $500, but we wasted trying to get mechanics. Long story short, we couldn't fix it. On top of not getting our truck, they told us that we um, we self repoed it by leaving it there. So they kept the truck, they kept my money all in one day, and it was over $17K that we lost. Wow. Yeah, listen, what, listen, I had this idea because I had this idea before they were doing vinyl wraps in the window, cars, you know, vinyl wraps. I had a, lo it was called local wraps. I heard about vinyl wraps. I went down mm -hmm. to Florida. I went to local wraps. It was a location. I slept in their garage in their basement, learning how to wrap cars within four days. I came back, started wrapping cars. Um, and I came up with this idea that I seen in Vegas. And there was no all the this was before Uber, taxi cabs, United Taxi Cabs was the only thing there was. So mm -hmm. I seen it in Vegas. So I went to the taxi cab place. Long story short, so I said, I want to rent all they had 115 cabs, all 115 back of your window, sir. I'm gonna give you fifty dollars a month for them. If not, he said, no, I'll do it for a hundred. I said, I'll, I'll pay you a hundred for every back window. I went to go sell the ads for $300 a month, which was easy. I, so all I had to do was go to the city, get it approved. I went like you did. You had a big account. I went to Summerfest, which is the biggest thing here. And I sold them a hundred cabs the first day. He said, we'll take them all because Summerfest is coming. Wow. Exactly. I said, oh my God, my, this, God, this is it. This is it. So I go get the city approved. First approval. I just need the county to approve it. I'm like, we're on. This is going to change my life. All right, here we go. 
The guy, everybody's approved it. The uh, alderman is behind me all the way. We go to county, they deny everything. Yeah. I go, mm -hmm. I go to fight it. They tell me because the city, I said the city must have them on their windows. They said that's a city. They own them. You can get a lawyer and fight this, but I had ran out of money by then. Yeah, same thing happened to me. You know, the city of St. Louis. I was in St. Louis, man. They put they put me in the the post office. Put me in their newsletter, and they Whoa. they communicated because we dropped fifty set of keys just to see what the you know what the how we would get how yeah. many keys we would get back, and they, yeah. they thought it was a great thing. They communicated it throughout you know the yeah. post office in Missouri. But when it got to D.C., didn't have the 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 the, the right connections there. Listen, and so, brother, I, and the, that's why I said I don't. I'm only laughing because I, I. That's all you can do. I can to, <laughs> listen, at one time I came up with an idea. I bought a T-shirt at Burlington Co. Factory with a donut, and I went to the gym for him. People were like, "Why you got a T-shirt with a donut?" I just thought it was cool and it was cheap at Burlington Co. Factory. <laughs> yeah. It was cool. <laughs> I bought the donut. I said, I'm doing a donut festival because I had already been known for festivals. I said, I'm doing it. They were like, oh my God, that's amazing. I said it for like a week and then I told my girl, I said, I think we could do this. So I, I put out a, a, a Facebook page without even looking for a venue. And I put out that I was having this event and we got over a thousand followers. Wow. I, I went to a hotel and I said, hey man, look at I got this here. Was, can I do it here and don't charge me anything and they'll buy drinks or whatever. Long story short, man, we got 30 donut vendors to come and give out donuts for free because they had to the people paid 15 to get in and they would grab samples from everyone. Yeah. And the vendors, what they would get is promotion out of it. People would get to yeah. know their business. Right. Out. Listen, we sold many tickets, many tickets. Enough that uh, Eventbrite was telling me a $10,000 ticket. But I made this simple mistake, right? Oh, and I almost got sued by a lot of people because I didn't know that another thousand people were going to show up for 100 tickets. I put 100 tickets left, a thousand people showed up and they were mad. <laughs> I'm like, wow, wow. Yeah, listen, it was, they were calling the news, lawyers. My wife, is, I'm telling you, she could tell you all this stuff, but this is real I stuff. So then, uh, it, it was insane. It was like they were, people, I'm going to tell you this, people love donuts. They love donuts. <laughs> like, I, yeah. people showed up in donut outfits. Me listen, there were couples in donut outfits. I said, what the fuck? Excuse me. I said, what the heck is going on here? But we yeah. sold out. But listen, so then he, I did a lot of stuff through Eventbrite, and I didn't know that they had an option to pay a certain amount of ticket or percentage. I was new at the time, so I hit percentage. I gave them people $6,000 of a fee. Wow. When I could have paid directly about like 300 bucks, and they kept six grand on my payment. I mean, I kept a nice See, amount, but it was... I say, knowledge. That's the first yeah. thing. It was a $6,000 lesson. That it will never happen again, but it, that's and I tell people about it now so they can kind of. And, and you yeah. know that, that's what I was going to say. I know how to be successful in mm -hmm. anything I'd want to do today. I know how to do it. Yeah. You know how? Mistakes. No, right. Find somebody that's already successful and do what they do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's, listen, that's a good point. That, I figured that out after years. Now. <laughs> Yeah. Now I know you. that. Now I look and now I'm like, oh yeah, okay. Oh, I go online and I look for somebody that knows how to do it already. That's exactly that is right. So funny. And so, you know, I like I told myself, there's no new wheel. Yeah. yeah, so that's right. You can't. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. So there, you, the there's no. The I mean, it's 2024. You cannot reinvent a new wheel. It's just True. you just can't. All you got to do is try to be yourself and help the way that works. But there's I'll no new it. wheels. The industries are built already. There's no new industry. There's no many new inventions you can come up with right now. It's just That's like true. this show. This show is an authentic show, and it's yeah. it's designed to reach a, a diverse market, right? Yeah. Um, and and to to share like what you're sharing right now, it's not. It's hard to find this in a book. Yeah, For, yeah. You know, the audience that's listening now, they're picking up nuggets. And and, mm -hmm. and and it can help people avoid a lot of the pitfalls that you're and I never got to. that, man. Exactly. Right. Listen, when I got into trucking, right, I try to I look, I'm a, I, I don't I don't have a college degree and I'm, I'm I work at I'm a director out of, of you know, there's a lot of stuff I do because of how the hard work. So I preach hard work mm -hmm. a lot. But um what was my point I was about to make? It's okay. <laughs> It'll come back to you, Yusuf. It's okay. Yeah, I was gonna make but, a point with that out. Um, but when you when you think about it, it, just let us know though, because it was important you, here. What were you were making some good points. Yeah, you were making some good points. Your passion. 
Uh, uh, yeah, the, the, the passion, but it was, I, I was going to come back to me because it was important. Oh, yeah. No, so when I started the trucking company, um, nobody, I would call, I would join Facebook groups for truckers and box truckers. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm new. I'm looking for some help. I got stuck in many places. We started going on the road. So I would, my guys would break down in, in Ohio, Minnesota, all over the mm -hmm. Midwest. And I would get on there and a couple guys would actually, that didn't even know me, would answer at four in the morning and say, hey, I'm a trucker. This is what you got to do. Tell your guy to do this. So there was a lot of that. But there was, it was very, very small. Even me coming at them humble, like, hey, uh, old, old G or old, you know, I'm a young dude trying to get in, I, I, you know, whatever I got to do, nobody. So when I started trucking, I started learning. Like, for example, I didn't know that uh, um, I didn't want to pay a factoring company because I didn't want to pay the 5%. So, but what happened was I didn't know that there was 30 net. I didn't know what 30 net was at the time. Mm -hmm. So then I'm like, all right. So I'm thinking checks are going to start coming in. I'm like $40,000 in the hole in, in, in payroll, 22,000 in gas bill. And my checks ain't coming in. And I'm calling companies. They said, it's net 30. You need, you don't have a factory company. I'm like, oh my God, everything got paid. I ended up getting a factory company and that started paying us right away the same day. They took 3%. But that's why I jumped on TikTok. My TikTok, I don't even use it much. But we ended up getting 10,000 views on all these videos because nobody was giving this information. But I was like, man, I got to give this information out. I'm like, it'll come back right. to me in some good way. But it's, it's hard to – so it's important what you guys are doing, just even basic guys like me from the, you know, that are just doing – Man, you're doing amazing yeah, work. Right, a great know. work in the earth is what I call it. And, yeah, you know, the, 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 the biggest thing is, yeah, you know what? You said you know how to make money. You can make money, but when you use your gift and your talent to help other people, to guide other people, money can't buy that. No. Mm -hmm. Money can't <laughs> buy that. If, if I asked you right now, if you had to put a, a dollar amount on what what your lessons, hard-won lessons have cost you, <laughs> how much you pay, because you even come up with a number. No, mm -hmm. man, I, really, no. I really could not. Yeah, no. I could not. And so Yusuf made some really great points regarding the passion. The passion is what keeps him going, keeps him motivated, keeps him driving, right? And that factor of being an entrepreneur. But there's a question that I was going to ask both of you. At what point did you realize it, with the examples that you shared with your failed or what you consider a failed entrepreneurship business? At what point did you realize enough was enough and you needed to move forward or or do you feel like if you would have kept going a little bit longer with that, even if you failed the first or second or third time, that it would have been successful? A hundred percent. But I would have to get the knowledge. I would have to know. I would have to, I would have to stick through that part that I probably didn't stick through. Um, okay. And it, it, it ended up, I ended up winning because I got lessons out of it. But uh -huh. um, it's just like, you know, if you, especially with certain industries, it's not like um, trying to be a YouTuber or one. Those are hard. But when you, it comes to like something that's proven, it works. Like let's say real estate, trucking, um, even what he was, everything. If you, but you got to fight and you got to be able to have that money to back it up. And you got to be able to get, go like, cause you got to get, get, be able to stick through the dip. If you can mm -hmm. fight the dip up. But the thing is, how many dips can you go through? Sometimes, it, yeah. yeah, sometimes it's not. Sometimes I'm a pray. I'm not a religious guy, but I'm a praying guy. And sometimes the guys mm -hmm. like, hey, man, now we got to jump over here. This, you'll come back to this later or move this on. Or that idea can give it to somebody else that's going to advance to them. And you took yours out of that juice. And now they're going to grab and whatever they. So that's why I don't hold nothing. I don't get. But and you can't force anything either. You want to go out of flow, like they say, with the water and just go with mm -hmm. things. And also, it's a lot of things. Pay attention to the market. Um, pay attention to trends, what's going on. People are controlled by the media. People control by social media. People want whatever. What is it? The cup the other day with the Starbucks came out. People are going crazy. They, they, they started every week is something. But um, if I could keep, oh, yeah, it's, it, just, it just depends how you see it, you know. If, yeah. but, if, but if it's, but just one last thing. But if it's like uh, trying to blow up, like I say, YouTube and all that, which I believe, gamer. You gotta go be ready for them ten year runs and all that, but with the other businesses, mm -hmm. that's on you decide. You know, it's that's good. Oh, that's oh, good feedback. So here's something I would share with you, um, Yessi and uh -huh. um, Yusef, is that I learned because I had to go and get some business coaches, and here's one of the most valuable lessons that I learned about business: never go into a business without an exit plan. Yeah. Hmm. Do you have you ever heard of these CEO guys? They get fired and then they get this big lump sum of mm -hmm. money. 
Yeah. You know why? Because they negotiated that up front. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good to know. Yeah. So they get, so that would be my suggestion for anybody is never go into a business, you know, adventure without having already an exit strategy in place. Yeah. Well, I, well, I, the way I would put it is don't leave your day job to run your business. Keep your day job while you're running your business. I'm oh, pretty yeah. sure Mr. Tim means the same thing. Just don't. Don't leave your day. There's no way. Just don't sleep. Don't sleep as much. Don't sleep eight hours. <laughs> right. And and we, we do that. Like, I, I, I still work a full-time job as well. Um, and, and what I mean also, Yousef, is, okay, if you say you're going, you have $20,000 to invest in this business, yeah. when you hit that 20000 or you give yourself five years, when you hit that 20,000 mark or five years and you haven't, you're not seeing the results that you had anticipated, um, then you need to have an exit strategy, yeah. right? That way you don't go so low. Cause let me tell you something. A lot yeah. of people start businesses and they lose so much of themselves or their finances. Mm -hmm. You said, everybody <laughs> doesn't bounce back like you brother. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, they trust get, me. They, um, they can get trapped off into, you know, because, you know, my background hey, Mr. is. Tim, you, Mr. Tim, you're the guy I'm going to start calling for advice. I'm not the guy. I'm not. I'm 100 percent. I'm not the guy you call for advice, man. I'm the guy that you call and say, hey, man, this, I said, man, get your ass up. Get you, Did you cry yet? You cried already? All right, cool. Did you shower yet? All right, listen, go take a shower and, like, finish the tears. Let them all out. Go put a nice outfit on and keep going. Because shit ain't yeah. stopping. Right. So, but yeah. I, that's but that's why my answer is that way. But you trust me, your way, your answer is probably what ninety percent people should hear. Because not, I, I think seventy percent shouldn't be entrepreneurs. Um, but I, it, you gotta be ready for the mass whoopers, man. If you want to well, be, in. It, it, here's here's the mm -hmm. other thing that I coach as well. And you know, I here's what I discovered. It took me thirty five years to 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 get to learn this. Is that everything that God created comes to this planet with a gift trapped yeah. inside of it everything a bird comes in with a gift of flight already in it nobody puts flight in a bird a fish comes in with a gift of swim already in it a mango seed comes in with a gift of a tree every yeah. mango seed has a tree trapped inside of it but it has to be in the right environment you can take that mango seed and sit it on your kitchen counter and it'll sit there for 30 years and the tree will remain trapped in the seed it won't come out take yeah. that same seed drop it in some soil Give it some moisture and sunlight. Boom! Here comes the tree that was trapped yeah. inside the seeds. Mm -hmm. You know, our, our society does us a bit of a disservice and says you can do anything you want to do. Well, you might can, but you could fail at it too. Yeah, right. That's, that's we true. Have to, we have to discover what our gift is, because see, when we discover that gift, it'll give us a sense of significance. It's our source of value. Then. Yeah. That will lead us to our purpose. Mm -hmm. Our purpose is why we were created. You know, you've seen it very vividly. You know, Michael Jordan was created to play basketball. Tiger Woods was created to shoot golf, right? Yeah. Tom Brady was created the quarterback, right? You, you, you see that, right? Yeah. So when you discover that purpose, it will then generate a vision. Right. Vision, right. Vis, vision is our purpose in pictures. Right? Yeah, sure. I see it. Now, when I see that vision, I get excited. That's called passion. Yeah. That passion influences other people. And then you have leadership. So <laughs> that's how 100%. that thing works. Yeah, yeah. 100%. That's awesome. Yeah, for that, I mean, sure. That's I great. Mean, yeah, I mean, everybody, that's why a team is a team, man. Everybody's got a part. There you go. Bingo. And, ding, and, ding, and ding. One thing, one thing you can do, a lot of people think you can do a solo thing with a business. You can only go so far. You won't get to level 100, the, the top. You'll get to like, you can get to like 72, 72, level 72, running real fast and no sleep. But there's only a certain, you're going to eventually, everybody needs to have one person or at least two. So you got to have a team. Man. When you're building you know, something for something like with a real platform, like a real, just that, that, that's something that's going to be stable and it's going to last for a while. You need, it's, it's, there's no way. That's why, that's why, why do you think, like I tell my buddy, I said, man, look at it. all these buildings, all these malls, all this stuff is owned by a group of people. I got mm -hmm. 20, you got 20, I got 20, I got 20, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, 100, we'll take 100 to the bank, 100, that bank is going to give us another 100 for that. Now we got 200,000, let's go buy a building and we'll split it into 10 businesses in it. 
Most if you go to it's not rocket it, science. It's not, man. If you go downtown, most buildings are owned by a group of people. It's most huge buildings. It's a it's a group of people. It's not one person that owns it. Um, that's just unless it's like a father, mom, and pop business that was grown from 1932 and that's been going on for and he's got all these contracts. But besides that, you gotta get a team, man. You gotta get that. You know, my, right. when I when I talked about um, find somebody who is successful and do what they do, I, I I learned that from Michael Jordan's book. He came into the league, he was scoring, you know, he was winning scoring titles. He was putting up a whole lot of points, but he wasn't winning championships. Yep. And he looked hmm. at Magic Johnson. Magic Johnson when that was out in L.A. doing the no look pass, and he was getting everybody involved. Yeah. So Michael came back and he started implementing his, you know, getting everybody involved. His point production went down, but he started getting rings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same. Yeah, no, it's true. Both of you made a good point, though. So that leads me into the next segue of the entrepreneurship ships to sail. Because, Yusef, you brought up a good point about bringing other people into the team. Mm. But we do understand that not everybody has... A loving personality, you know, so with that, how do you from a day to day deal with different personalities to make sure that everybody stays focused, it, we're on task, and let's say if maybe person A and person B are not quite rubbing or meshing together, how do you diffuse that? Because that's important for a successful business to have everybody in the same accord. So what what feedback? Everything, everybody runs things a little bit different. Um, yeah. I'm, I'm at a, I'm at a point right now where we're like we're getting to the 10 year mark where it's our, where it's, for us it's our beginning year. Um, for a lot mm -hmm. of people it's like the 11th, but to me it's like this is our beginning year, and we have a formula that 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 works. So even with me, it's really hard to work with me because and I and again I'm not a religious guy, but I'm a praying guy, and I believe God's mm -hmm. given me this vision. And it's been working. It's like a peaceful, everyone involved, hundreds of people just winning from the thousands of people. Um, so I, again, just to, I say that first because I'm a very, very strict person, um, mm -hmm. but I also don't expect people to be perfect. Um, I, uh, but at the same time, with the work, yes, not personally, but when we come to this mission, we working, um, and we getting things done. And if you jump on this train, we're going at it. Even if you're sick, even if you're worse, it, that's that's kind of how I. The only way to get things done because when you and and also not hiring friends. Hiring people that you don't know at all, um, working with people mm -hmm. that you build a relationship through the business, from the business, um, so you know it's built on a, even though it's you go out have a drink, but it's built on the base of the business. Mm -hmm. So that way we know if there's a, I am the boss here, I am the owner. If you're the boss and I'm partnering with you, you're the boss. But there is a central, there's a way that because for many years, as we can see with the government, many things committees don't work too well. So right. if I, I'm always open for new ideas at, at this point right now. Um, again, I'm going to be very honest because I put everything into this festival. With the festival, when it comes to that, I take creative ideas, but not ideas when it comes to changing the business model because it's working mm -hmm. right now. Um, so a lot of people have to be able to deal with me too. You know what see, I mean? It's like, do you work with me too? Because I'm a little bit mess not messy, but I got my way of working. Can I work? But when it comes to other people, it's just loyalty too. I put yeah. 10 years into this. I don't want people around me that are not going to stick with me and have other. And if you do have other plans, let me know. Um, it's hard. Finding people is the hardest thing. I was just having this conversation with my lady. The hardest thing is finding people that move at your train, that don't have secret agendas, that are really trying to help you, that are really trying to do what the mission is, and that you know they're just they're gonna listen. They're gonna. Um, me, I'm uh, I'm more of a fan of hiring females than males. Males seem to have uh, they they're cool in the beginning, but then they have a uh, they want to right away come and do that. It's normal testosterone. They want to come and run stuff once they learn things, and then they start getting offended a little bit. Fast. And this is just my my experiences when mm -hmm. it comes to mm -hmm. live businesses. I'm talking right. specifically about the festival and things like that. Um, with females, they're leaders. Um, they know how to like turn down your ideas, but in a different way, but in a productive way. I didn't like a macho way. It's different. It's like a mother. It's different. It's like I'm trying to help you. Um, it's just for a lot of reasons. So it just depends. You know what business you're running, but yeah. it, it, regardless, the hardest thing in having a business is, is people. Is, is pe well, you, right. you, you know, my take on that number one to answer your question, Yessie, is leadership, right? Um, a person who's in a position of leadership has to understand how to motivate each person, right? right. People are different. 
Phil Jackson could not coach Michael Jordan and Dennis Rodman the same way. He right. had to have a different approach, right? And what I have learned in my background in any kind of business that, that I would start, I'm going to have processes. Processes take feelings and opinions off the table. Exactly. And I learned that in corporate America, IBM, the military, very process driven. They had a process for leaving your voicemail on the phone. And, and if it wasn't in a, an alignment with the process, you could get written up. Mm -hmm. Everything was a process because there's two main benefits of a process. Number one, it can help you very quickly identify where a problem is. If mm -hmm. you have a process right. in place. And then number two, to, to yourself's point, plug and play. Hey, you don't work, put you in here. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, again, um, one thing is you, with me, I'm always with passion. I'm always with energy. People start feeding into that, and we all going to win. This is not yeah. this is about what means. I'm right. the last one to eat, always. My team, I'm taking care of the team, they take care of me. Um, but it's just, again, like he's saying, it's just a lot of personality. So everybody's different. How I treat everybody is different. Some people yeah. are more like, hey, how you do? Because I know they need it. How you doing? You're right. like this. That. Some people, I'm like, no, I can see the boss in you. You're going to, you're a leader. Let's start stepping up a little bit and, and changing these crybaby ways. Let leave that for the other guy that that's his way. He's not doesn't have it yet. You're almost ready. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Let's get going with you. Uh, pat in the back. Let's go. And to building people, me is building leaders, man. My number one thing is I don't want workers. I tell people I don't hire workers. Powerful. Ding ding I, ding hit the bell. Yeah, that's yeah, a hire, leader leader right there. Yeah. It's to build other leaders. That's a distinguishing yeah. right. mark of a leader is yeah. to Help other people become leaders, man. No, that that's the key, man. <laughs> no, man. Listen, I'm learning from everybody, else, but that's what I my goal is. Like I tell you, when people come to me, I'm like, hey, no, I don't hire workers. I hire leaders, man. I hire bosses. I hear yeah, people that, that. are gonna move. I don't want to. You got your own. I don't want to be telling you what to do, man. You're a grown man. Or you're a woman, right. you're married. You got kids. I don't want to tell you. Let's get into one mission. Like he said, let's go. Mr. Tim said, let's get the process. We know the process here. We know that it takes a hard work. You're going to get 100 no's, then you should have done 1,000 calls. 1,000 calls, 100 no's. Cool. It's going to do the math. Eventually, you'll get like 50 out of 1,000. So it's a math thing. Let's just keep going. It's especially, a numbers game. <laughs> especially if you believe in what you're doing. Like all my – anything I have anything to do with is – is I'm, I have passion for it. I don't, I'm at an age now where I, my, my, I have a, a good career and I have my good stuff that I've done. So I pick what I like and I love. Um and I hope that people do the same thing with their stuff. I, all the people that have worked for me, even with trucking, I'm like, hey, what's your goal? What's your next goal? You can't drive for me forever. I need you to become a leader by eight months because by the year, you're going to want to be a boss. I know you. You're a man. So let's give me eight months of your life, and I'll help you own a truck. And then I'll help you get the truck. So learn your, here, here's paperwork. Learn how to fill this out. Here are the contracts. Learn how to fill that out. Because in eight months, you're gonna, your brain automatically is going to say, I think I can do this. I've seen the numbers on those contracts. Cool. Do your thing. You give me eight months, you do your learning, you get paid for it, but help me train this next person so then I can do my time with them. And I kind of learned with different industries like that, with the Puerto Rican festival is a little bit longer because people want to be part of the fest. But there's other jobs that you're just like, here, I know you want to learn, let's learn. So everybody, you just got to see what industry you're in. Some is long, jeopardy. Some is, if, if it's like trucking, people want to be entrepreneurs and you got to be upfront with it. Like, what's your goal here? Even with the festival, I ask people, what's your goal? What do you want to do? Whenever you director, right. you want to own this because I don't want to do this forever. By the time I'm a certain age, I'm trying to just come and check out what you guys are doing now. You know, the right. on. Yeah. yeah, yeah. See, I have a question for you. Yeah, absolutely. What's up? So, from what I hear, I've never been mm -hmm. in the entertainment industry. Mm -hmm. I've heard comedians say, "Telling jokes is the easy part. <laughs> it's the business behind it." Is that, has that been your experience as well? Yes, to an extent, and no. And simply because I, be, being a professional actor, I am very selective on the projects that I say yes to or that I partner or agree to do. Mm -hmm. I I do, I study. I, I look at um, if I've interacted with individuals before, and if so, how is my interaction? How, how are they? How are their demeanor? Also, what is the project um, saying? Like, for example, um, you know, is it positively going to motivate and impact 
the community because that's what I'm about. I'm about to, you know, I like to positively motivate and impact and especially deliver a message, a product, um, enlighten people. And so there's just many factors. Now, from a business standpoint, um, it's, it's, it's just knowing how to negotiate, how do you know your worth? Mm -hmm. um, also making sure you keep track of all your expenses and things like that, because when, when taxes come, that's, that's another story regarding yeah. business, right? Taxes, mm -hmm. um, just so many different elements. So yes and no to your question. It, it just really depends on, on the individual and, and what they have going on. So, yeah. If you had to, if you had to put a percentage on it, would you say in your industry as a professional actor, is mm -hmm. it, is it 20% acting ability and 80% business or is it 80% business? And, you know, it, what, what would that percentage look like? You know what I mean? Is there more effort, would you say, into developing your skill set as an actress or managing the business side of it? So because I, I self-manage myself currently and oh. I'm in the process of helping to manage and, and get more talent yeah, you on my manage roster, other people, right? Right, right. Getting yeah, getting more people on on board. But nevertheless, it takes more to invest in yourself because you like for me, I've traveled to New York, to LA, to to Cali, um, to uh, Texas to do different actors workshops. Um, I've I've traveled to different parts and network, networking is important. Um, so it's just really investing in yourself so that people understand that once you invest in yourself, now they want to invest in you because you've invested in yourself. Similar yeah. to when you go to school, you get a degree. Okay, now you got your piece of paper that's investing in yourself. What are you going to do with it? And so being a professional actor is, is the same thing. It is investing in yourself as a business because I am the business. That's and right. now going from there to, to execute my talents in, in different projects. And that's when the negotiation comes in. Um, you know, what they're expecting of you, what is your role, is not just saying yes to everything. And I, I remind talent, you, you can't say yes to everything because everything is not going to be for you. You have to learn how to say no, and it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And yeah. So I want to know, is it, but so it's not like Cat Williams said on the interview. <laughs> <laughs> well, thankfully, my experience has not been like Cat Williams. I'm just, so. I'm <laughs> <laughs> but you know, there's there's a lot of, of dark secrets coming out in in these interviews now, uh, and you know, it, it you know what's what's done in the dark will come to the light at some point, right? Right, and and I learned that the hard way. That's why today, and I think you said you know you kind of spoke about this too. You know, we do the right thing for the right reason, whether someone is looking or not, because right. we know that at some point, if we don't do the right thing. You know, at some point, you know, we're we're going to reap the, the 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 harvest from from that as well, and right. so yeah, you know, that's one of the things that I would say to someone who is looking into entrepreneurship: make sure that you have some guiding principles. You know, mm -hmm. there, there, you know, when you look at major organizations, you know, they have guiding principles. And, and what happens is when you have these guiding principles, then every decision that you make for the vision for the for the business gets filtered through these principles. And that way you will never go wrong. Yeah, don't go. Uh, I, my thing is people got to stop just going on YouTube and seeing what's trending and, and businesses like that. A lot of people are losing money with that stuff. Just seeing what's um what uh what just people go on youtube they see the next hustle with, it, with either if it's the stock market even box truck box truck was a thing i seen online thank god i we made it work and, and it worked for us but you know how many people lost money and there's how many lease trucks are out there with bi open bills right now that there's yeah. hundreds of thousands of people that owe money for trucks right now there's people that have lost their homes um because box truck was one of the ones that came in or selling for example on shopify People getting mm -hmm. in all the way without knowing all their stuff. Um, even even the young ladies that just order a lot of products from Alibaba and, and think that a lot of people, like what I tell them is they think people are going to come to them. That's the problem. There's a lot of people that open up a business and say, okay, where, here's my business. Where's everybody at? Even if it's online or where's everyone at? And they forget that it doesn't work like that. You have to build your numbers. So you have to go from one client to two clients to 10 clients to seven. 
one at a time. I mean, it's the same thing for anyone that wants to be a music artist or an actor. You have to right. build your families from 10. Okay, now I got 20. That's why I tell a lot of these young cats, I'm like, bro, Instagram is in your hand, okay? A lot of people don't know this, entrepreneurs. Listen, you can do this. I showed my son. You go on Instagram and you go on click and you go to, let's say you want to, like yesterday, my son is into clothing. I said, listen, man, go on your search, type in Japan, search. Now you go to places, places. Now all the, there's, oh, I said, oh, there's 8 million pictures on here. That's 8 million people that posted today, my brother, in, in Japan. So what you're going to do is you're going to send the next hour because I'm going to ground you for no reason. You're grounded for an hour just to do this. <laughs> now he's 17. So I'm like, I got to force him now to do things. I'm like, you're going to like as many pictures as you can. And if you like them, you're going to send an emoji with a fire. And I'm going to see how many Japanese friends you got by the end of the hour. He's like, all right, click, 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 click. You end up getting only two, but I said, now there's two Japanese people that follow you from on Instagram. Mm -hmm. That's two people you got there. Now, let's say if you post your shirt, tomorrow you do the same thing, the next thing, and by the end of the weekend, I have 10 Japanese friends, brother, and you're going to be somehow Google and translate and communicate, mm -hmm. and, and next week, you're going to do Mexico City, and you're going to do the same thing, and after that, you're going to do Japan, and then you're going to do the Sounds same. like a process to me. It's a right. damn process. <laughs> it's a you told them, not me. I didn't tell them <laughs> But listen, you see, like, <laughs> but listen, that's what a lot of everybody fails to do. It's that work. It's work. Right. So when my kids right. go to when my when 545 I'm up because I gotta shave my head. When everyone is asleep, the youngest, the baby goes to sleep by eight o'clock, the teen goes to sleep by 10. So then I go up at two hours and I give the teen some time, force it in there. Then my wife gets from 10 to like eleven thirty or whatever she has to do. And from midnight to whenever one a.m. whatever, then you gotta put in time. And then you wake up and you do it. So you got to have, and your lunch hours, if you got a job, you don't use your lunch hour to eat no more. Your lunch hour is not to do your, it is taking over. Now, the Netflix, don't even pay for your Netflix. That just did not even exist. And YouTube, if you want to watch documentaries on the type of business you're doing, YouTube is right there. Netflix is nothing for you. That is what it takes because it's just a numbers game. It's just a, I figured, it took me years to figure this out, guys. I'm trying to shake everybody like, listen, it took me years. I'm just figuring I mean, this stuff out. Now it's working. We appreciate you sharing this. Apreciamos mucho que estás aquí. Los agradezco por estar aquí con nosotros and, and sharing this information because es bien importante para la gente, especialmente muchos latinos que, que tienen el deseo de empezar negocios y no saben, they don't know. Um, yeah. But let, let's touch on the topic of you positively impacting the kids and the community. I've been seeing some of your posts on, on yeah, your Facebook. Yeah, no. So can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, no, oh, it's getting a little dark. Yeah, I might turn on it. But yeah, um, so I do with my, my biggest, my first thing is passion with the kids. Everything I do, even the mm -hmm. festival, kids don't pay. Um, I focus on all on their stuff. Um, during the day, I do work with an agency and work with kids in one of the worst areas in Milwaukee, 53206. So I build programs for kids and um, we got funding from the government and we pay for stuff for them. We have financial literacy courses that we do every month. Um, this next week, we have a, it's called a self-care class that we're doing for young ladies. We realized that a lot of them were coming into our seminars with hoodies on and their hair is mm -hmm. wrapped. And um, then we took numbers with their attendance and I kind of took them aside and I said, what's going on? And a lot of them said they didn't feel comfortable. So next week we have mm -hmm. a huge event um, for mm -hmm. about 25 females. We're going to give them, um, a, we're, we bought them a kit of beauty products, even how to everything in Africa, because these are all African American girls. This is the North side of Milwaukee. Anything they need to learn how to do their own hair in a kit. And I'm bringing in 15 stylist volunteers are going to show them how to use their own the tools wow. so they nice. can learn how to do their own hair at home so they can be more comfortable with going to school. But that's one, the barber, so I have one for the boys that's called the barber, uh, barbershop club. And I found all the uh, barbershops in the area in the, where they lived. And I called mm -hmm. them all. I stopped in there and I said, Hey man, I just want you to give me one free barber, one free haircut a month for a kid. One, that's it. All of them said, man, I'll give you four or five. What do you need? I said, all right, perfect. Found all the kids in those areas, and now they each have a barber shop they're assigned to, and it's called the Barber's Club. They take their attendance once a month. They get a free cut. They get to talk to a barber. Wow. He gets to look, he gets to look clean as hell in school with his fat, with his haircut. And then the barbers um, it started affecting them because they started calling me like, hey, bro, I don't let people smoke in my shop no more. No more weed. We don't cuss. We don't, we're changing mm -hmm. our ways. I'm buckling up my pants a little bit tight. Win, win. And it, win, win. And he's like, and then they'll post it on Facebook. I can't believe I'm a mentor. I'm a mentor now. I got it. They'll post it on Facebook. So it's like a, so building. Yeah. That's my, my main thing is uh, the youth thing. That's why our center and all that, we're working on the youth, uh, the youth center right now. Um, and that's my passion is working with the kids and, and helping them get through some of that stuff. So we got a million programs. Yeah. It's just, uh, but even the Puerto Rican festival, a lot of that stuff funds. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, That's well. awesome. Yeah, and we and we definitely need it, Yusef. You know, mm-hmm. we see we see the destruction in in a lot of our future generations, and especially you know in neighborhoods with people who look like me, right? Yeah. Um, and 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 it's unfortunate, but a lot of younger you know um, younger people don't get access to that training. Right. Yeah. So they, they are engaged in listening to music and watching TV shows that do not help them move forward or help yeah. them progress or help them mature. And so right. what you're teaching these young people just in that in that arena with how to dress and prepare themselves. So now we don't we don't really look at this to this point, but I do. Yeah. And I think you have too. When I look in the mirror, if I don't like what I see, how can I expect somebody else exactly. to like what I see? Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. If I look at myself in the mirror and I look throwed away, hair look crazy, don't, you know, I'm looking crazy. How am I going to feel about, how am I going to behave? And, and right. imagine that same scenario of being a 15 year old girl or a boy in a high school with a all Snapchat, phone, Instagram, TikTok, everybody recording every. So just imagine even the. Uh, that's why kids, a lot of kids don't go to school. We we started the program, and to me, I was mind blown because everybody in my office has a degree. I don't have a degree, and then and in other agencies, everyone has a degree, and I don't have a degree. And they were like, "Oh my god!" I, I'm like, "Guys, what the hell this is this? Common sense? You feel good? You feel good." You feel good. <laughs> They're, they're like, oh my god, amazing program, amazing. I'm like, what, what the hell is going on here? I, yeah, I was confused. I was like, what? And they were like, we can't believe you're coming up with these programs. I'm like, okay, hold on. What did I, that that shows that a lot of people are not showing up to these things and just looking at the kids. But you just gotta look at the kids, not just look at them, but like talk to them, and and you'll figure it out. And it's a lot of them, man. We have hundreds, hundreds, and hundreds and hundreds of kids that are going through these. Yeah um these programs so but that's and we've got entrepreneurship classes that are coming up you know i have a club called the check-in they have to check in with me once a month they come eat with me because we believe in breaking bread together is can be nice people i got i got boys that are transgender that are that that their parents are like he comes in my house and he's talking like a man but then we know something's going on and they come in my in my events and they'll be like yeah what's going on by the time they leave they're like yeah you know they're talking the way they normally talk and we're, right. we're like, whatever, whatever your, your issue is, your bit, we're going to meet you right there, find you whatever, mm-hmm. if it's the court, if it's confused, whatever you're going is, and we've, it's been successful, man. And everything has been just common sense, just showing yeah. up. That's, That's it, man. awesome, man. And I'm going to definitely reach out to you. Uh, I, I, I'd like to support, you know, what you're doing out there and I'll find yeah. some ways yeah. we'll have some conversations and see how, you know, we can collaborate. Right. Yeah, because sure. you know, I do the same thing. My focus is on the future generations and helping kids. And, and I'll tell you why the reason I do that is because had I been exposed to some different kind of environments, remember environments matter, some yeah. different information, then I could have possibly made some different decisions and, you know, avoided a lot of pain and loss. So mm-hmm. now today, if I can take this experience, wisdom that I acknowledge that I have and share it with someone to help them avoid what I've gone through, then it makes everything that I've gone through worth it. 100%. Because do you know mm-hmm. what, do you mm-hmm. know what, do you know what the, the most hurtful human emotion is that a human being can experience? I would say sadness. Sadness? What do you say, Yusef? I would say betrayal um, or loneliness. Okay. Here's what I've discovered. It's regret. Ah, okay. That makes sense. Because you can't go back and change it. Right, right. It regret yeah, is it. a mother jumper. So it helps me, you know, uh, deal with some of the emotions because, man, I haven't always been the guy that you see now. Yeah. Right. I, well, hey, listen, yeah. Me, <laughs> hey, I'm, the, I'm the same way, man. But 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 that's how I know that everything's possible. I'm like, when people yeah. come to me with the stuff that I do, I'm like, man, I don't want to hear it, bro. Like, I do want to hear it, but I want to hear about how you can fix this. What is it? Yeah. Let's come up with a plan. 
Hey, and then we'll sit down. We'll do all that. But we got to come up with a plan, too, because guess what, man? Tomorrow's coming. Yeah. Right. Tomorrow, like it or not, tomorrow's coming. Unless oh, are you going to go home and, and commit suicide? And, and I say this to people because I honestly mean it. I'm like, is that what you're going to do? And again, it, it, and, and, and again, I've took a lot of and I asked directly because some people are going to tell you, yeah, if it's true. And most people are like, no. OK, so tomorrow's coming, man. We got to right. move forward. And it comes down to business. It comes down personally. It comes down. If you want to come, we're in America. Mr. Tim, you know that things work different. Or you can move to another island where you don't have to have any. But this is America here. You're going to have a yeah. rent, you have a rent to pay or a mortgage to pay, whatever you decide. You have to pay for your food. Whatever you decide, this is free America, but it's not free. So you either got to buckle up and help everyone that's coming after you and yourself, or it's mm -hmm. cool if you're not, you're not that guy, but at least you got to maintain your family or maintain yourself. So regardless, we have to move. We right. have to move forward. You know, even if you're on state help, the state help requires you to do job search, requires you to do programs. It requires, a, it's W, welfare's not around anymore. It's the workforce, whatever, W2 they call it. Now. It's a whole different thing. So it's right. like, what do you want to, um, a lot of people spend time, uh, and again, this is just my personal opinion. A lot of people spend too much time thinking on, on the past and all these things. Oh, my, my mom, my, move forward. If, if you start really thinking about moving forward, you'll be able to make it through a business. If you can mm -hmm. build that strength where you can say, or even forgiving, it's all together, forgiving, moving forward, you know, it's all in one thing together. You got to be able to move. So then, and then it's be, it's the one of the powers of an entrepreneur. They've been able to deal with that. So they can deal with people thinking you're crazy. And you can deal with losing. Like Mr. Tim said, that huge loss he had. But look, he came back like 30 times harder. He's doing it. And now he's telling it's just, it just, it, it, it's a lot that comes out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, uh, you, you know, I'm, I'm going to send you one of the things I'm going to talk to you about. I'm going to send you. I promote these 12 principles to inner peace for common unity, uh, for happy, healthy, and safer communities in which to live in. And these 12 yeah. principles, they are programmed, they are processed, honesty, hope, faith, courage, integrity, yeah, yeah, humility, humility, discipline, forgiveness, acceptance, awareness, and gratitude. These 12 principles are valid in the boardroom, the locker room, the living room, the classroom, even the bedroom for married people. You know, sure. and so these, these it, you know, my my goal has been and for some time and even moving forward now is to get these principles ingrained in mainstream. Right. Mm -hmm. Because right. we all are creatures of habit. Yeah. So if we develop healthy habits, see, we don't dictate our success. We decide our habits and our habits dictate our success. Yeah. Right. Bad habits. No success. Victim habits, no success. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> it, 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 hey, listen, it's if, if people really want to talk, honestly, if you want to talk business, then that's a thing that it's in it, people run around things, but it's honestly, it's if you want to play, that's not for you because you're going to get take a, a boat whoop, and it's just what it is, no matter yeah. where you get mm -hmm. into. Either if it's going to be in college where you learn your stuff or your t long test, or if it's going to be like me and Mr. Tim learning the hard way. But people really right. didn't teach us stuff. So you pick your, which one you want to do. But like I told my son, hard work is pays off. This right. season, he had a rough season, right? Had a rough basketball season. My, I'm the, I think I'm the best dad in the world. I love my son. My son I'll probably tell you, I don't miss a thing. But I told him this year, I said, what happened, man? You sat on the bench a lot, right? Yeah, I did. Why? Man, oh, these are, I just want one simple reason why. I don't want to hear. I just want to hear why. I didn't work hard, dad. I didn't, work on, I didn't train in the summer. Mm -hmm. Okay, there you go. Now we're talking. You didn't want you to yeah. transfer. Right, so that you did that benching. That was that was you getting do nothing. You get nothing. My brother, my, that's how it works. You go this summer and you put a hundred thousand hours and you're gonna do it because you just got you're an athlete. You're my family. We have a gift. But like Mr. Tim said, you gotta have gifts. Some people are athletic. Some people are not. Some people. My brother has amazing memory. He's a doctor. I don't remember anything. So everybody's got their yeah. I, I, and my son, that's one of the people. I he's older now, so I. You, you work and if you want to do a business that's the only way unless you got lucky and somebody buys your business and gives you hundred that's a lucky thing or, or if you right. got the right but i'm sure you put some work in but if not even mr tim you know that it is hard work so you have to this be able to come first without doing the hard work first you have to overcome you have to overcome personal stuff you have to be able to, even if you're in a relationship, be able to go to your wife and talk to her, not just let it sit in you and boil. Uh, that's going to affect you. No, babe, this is what's talking. Let's talk about it right now, please. I got to get, get my mind cleared up. If whatever your regret is, 
that you can fix, fix it. And whatever regret you can't fix, you let it go and you just move forward. That's what that's what vision gives us. It gives yeah. us mm -hmm. vision, discipline. You're talking about discipline, you said, and yeah. discipline is a product of vision. That's exactly it. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Discipline, key ingredient to success. Absolutely. So this topic is getting juicy. So I have a feeling because we're about to wrap up in just a few minutes that we should invite Yusef again for a part two. Absolutely. Of the yeah, I, appreciate, I really uh, appreciate the conversation too. Yeah. Now this is deep. This is deep. And shout out to everybody, all the viewers in and out. Thank you. Shout out to Rob One from Sparking Conversation for those great comments. James Rattle. We got Karen Kinslow. Uh, so we have a lot of great. Yes. Thank you all for tuning in. Uh, you all have been amazing. And shout out to Blaze DePronio. Shout out. Yes. Thank you so much. Now we will have a part two. So I'm going to coordinate. Tim and I are going to coordinate after the show with Yusef to see when we can bring him on because this is a lot of yeah, juicy I'm stuff. Que que aprender yeah, aquí, mi gente. I appreciate you too, Mr. Tim. Uh, all right, all your friend. experience and all that. It's good to have a conversation with. It's hard to understand. Some people don't understand, you know, the the hustle and the struggle and uh, just giving that information out so we can make it a little bit easier out for other people. And this was Absolutely. the original design that we would encourage one another. That's what we're yeah, doing. For, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah, man. Teamwork makes a dream work. <laughs> That's right. So, gentlemen, before we wrap up, Yusef, tell everybody, tell the viewers, how can they find you if they want to communicate with you, interact with you, etc. How can they find you? Your social media handle, email, etc. Uh, you guys, you can find me at bhm Yusef at Instagram, um, or you can find me at Yusef Morales on Facebook. Awesome, Tim. Remind everybody how they can find you. It's simple. Talkmantalk.com. You can Google me. Talk man, talk one word. Google me. Uh, come up. <laughs> yeah, I gotta get awesome. my own website, Mister Tim. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Hey, look, you're doing you're doing the right thing, man. You're doing a great work in the earth, man. I'm so honored, right, to to be able to have this conversation with you and, and such a such a you know a polished young man in the young season, mm -hmm. man. You, you have no idea what's ahead of you. No, I hey, you I'm a can't even see it. Hey, I, I yeah. appreciate hey, look, it. I gotta tell you this. I gotta tell you this. I gotta tell, <laughs> I gotta tell you this. I just heard this the other day. Damn, you're funny. So there was this this guy, he took his daughter on a on a cruise. Yeah. And so they were on the on the cruise ship and she couldn't see over the banner. Right. And so she said, Daddy, I can't see. And so he picked her up and he put her on his shoulder. And so now she could see everything. And she said, Daddy, Daddy, my eyes can see further than I can look. Mm. Well, that's where you're at, you said. Yeah, man. I appreciate it. <laughs> hey, listen, no. Well, I, your I, eyes can see further than you can look. Listen, man. Uh, water. I appreciate that, Mr. Tim, because I'm a respecter of the OGs. I'm like one of those dudes that was born old school. So I'd be trying to take and listen and trying to get. Again, I'm not a religious, but take messages from God, from anybody, especially yeah. when you're like, you got to get going. Uh, and, you know, and I just, I'm a learner, man. As you can see my back, Dame, I got a whole bunch of, man, but I'm a, uh, I'm a learner, man. I appreciate yeah. guys like you that talk about stuff and give us the platform, too, to just share our story and some of the stuff we go through is sometimes you just want to uh, just share the stuff. So I appreciate that, man. Thank appreciate you guys for you having too, me. Absolutely. Yes, Thank you again for tuning in, you all. Reach us at TV at gmail.com if you have any questions, you have a topic. For those who want to be a guest, email me. Email us. We, we'll get you on here. Also, uh, you can find me, Yessie Rodriguez. You can just Google Yessie Rodriguez, and you can find me on my social media handles and where I'm at. So thank you all for tuning in. Thank you both. Have a great night. Dios los bendiga. Peace.